We welcome you now to the midweek edition of our coronavirus virtual town hall as we answer your questions. Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Michael Wooten here in the two on your side newsroom and I'm Mary Alice Demler as we stand by, of course, for the live update from the White House. We hope to answer your questions about the severity of the pandemic here versus the rest of the country. Also, how telemedicine is changing health care amid this outbreak and handling family stress at home. But let's start here at the bottom of the hour with the three things that you need to know right now. Number one, we're coming off the deadliest day so far of this pandemic across the U.S. and here in New York State. NBC's count shows nearly 2,000 Americans lost their lives yesterday alone, with total cases nationwide now surpassing 400,000. Second, New Yorkers who have lost their jobs will soon get that additional 600 bucks per week from the federal government. Now, this state will be among the first in the country to be able to process that extra money that we have reported on extensively. It's part of the stimulus package. People who filed claims last month could start to see that extra money this week or next. New claims always take two or three weeks to process before the cash actually goes out. And number three, we have seen a dramatic drop in travel because of coronavirus in terms of passengers at the Buffalo Airport, cars on the thruway, and riders on the metro system. We go through the specific numbers coming up tonight on Channel 2 News at 6. And now let's get into your questions. And someone wanted to better understand all of the numbers that we keep talking about. Here's a question we got, quote, I keep seeing the daily updates of all the numbers and I know it's really bad in New York City and we aren't that bad, but it seems bad here too. But how do we compare with the rest of the country with minimizing spread? So we took some time today to try to look through all of these numbers to compare different areas. Now this is all as of 1:30 this afternoon. Some things have changed since then, but at that point we had 1,625 confirmed cases in the eight counties of Western New York. And when you factor in our population, it works out to 1.06 cases per 1,000 people. So we use the Johns Hopkins data for the entire country. The rate of confirmed cases across the US is 1.23 per 1,000 people. So here in Western New York, we are just slightly below the rate for the nation. But this is a big caveat. All of this is dependent on testing because all we can look at are confirmed cases. If testing here lags behind the country, it would skew those numbers. Yeah, we also looked at the rate in New York City, which is, of course, the epicenter of the pandemic in this country. And there you can see the rate for confirmed cases is more than eight people per 1000. That's just in the five boroughs. Also very high rates out on Long Island and in the suburbs of New York City. But again, our region, at least according to these numbers, appears to be pretty close to the rate that you're seeing across the United States as a whole. But again, it all depends on how much testing has happened. But it does give a little bit of perspective, Mary Alice, because we keep throwing out all these numbers and you kind of wonder what do they mean? I know and everyone's anxious because everyone wants the update and wants to know if all this quarantining and social distancing is making a difference and all the numbers that we have been able to see the reliable ones from the state and locally it has has an, has had an effect you know a positive one in flattening that curve but we are so far from being over it. Yeah, people have to continue to follow the advice from the experts. There you go. So let's go on. There's been a lot of talk over the past few days about how confirmed cases of COVID-19 are showing up more in minority communities, especially among African Americans. And if you were asked us, why do the numbers show black communities are getting harder hit by coronavirus? Does it have to do with testing or what's behind having more deaths among African Americans? Well, first of all, the numbers across the country and here locally show that African Americans are more likely to die from COVID-19. Yeah, what you're looking at is what we got yesterday for the first time. Erie County Executive Mark Polenkar is putting out the racial breakdown of deaths from COVID-19 in Erie County. Among the 39 people who at that point had lost their lives, 28 were white and 11 were black. And so do the math. African Americans made up 28% of the deaths even though they make up 13% of the total population. Experts are studying this disparity. They say that black Americans have more existing medical issues, have less access to health care, and could be more likely to be working at a job that puts him at a higher risk in terms of this virus. Dr. Burks with the White House Coronavirus Task Force said this earlier today. 
You know, we've been very concerned when we saw where the virus was going and the clear evidence from other countries that pre-existing conditions, particularly diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and asthma were particularly difficult in the disease course once infected. So I just want to make it clear, we don't think African Americans are more susceptible to getting infected, but we do think with those number of pre-existing conditions. And this really brings us back to the social determinants of health. And I think once this is over, we really need to look very carefully into each of those items to really look at what it's going to take to ensure the health of all Americans. Yeah, and that research is already beginning to try to understand kind of this disparity. And of course, we'll learn more as that goes on. That's right. County Executive um, Mark Polenkar's got that question today mm -hmm. as well from a local member of the media, and he said the same thing. They're going to continue to follow these numbers and react appropriately in our community when we have some real solid data where we can draw some conclusions. Yeah, chances are that you probably saw some of these chilling images out of Wisconsin yesterday. The state went ahead and had its primary election despite the health and safety concerns, despite not having enough poll workers. And that is what led to the long lines that you're seeing in these pictures. People forced to choose between exercising their constitutional right to vote and protecting themselves from the threat of coronavirus. Yeah, we got a question from a viewer who said our primary election has been postponed to June, but what if social distancing rules are still in effect and the election happens? How can we avoid becoming Wisconsin? So here's what we can tell you today. The governor announced that all New Yorkers will be able to vote absentee for the upcoming election due to this pandemic. Now, Erie County was actually kind of ahead on this. Take a look. This is a, a look at the absentee ballot, or at least the application for it. The Democratic and Republican election commissioners kind of had a broad interpretation of the rules, and they have already been allowing people to do the check mark on the part we've highlighted, public health emergency COVID-19. That is now one of the reasons that you can get one of these absentee ballots mailed to you. In Erie County, you just go to elections.erie.gov. Right there at the top, you can see this new application to get a mail-in absentee ballot so you won't have to go out on election day. You can fill it out safely at home, mail it back to the Board of Elections, and then you'll get your ballot in the mail and fill it out and be able to send it back. You'll eventually be able to do this in other counties as well, again, because the governor took this executive action. Now, there are important deadlines, so you don't want to wait too late to request that absentee ballot. A lot of information, but it's it's good to know that we're not going to have to do what people had to do yesterday. I know that had a lot of people rightfully concerned, and it's good to know that Erie County's got a little bit of a jump on everybody else. Just don't wait too long because then you get, I mean, you imagine they're going to be overwhelmed with people oh. wanting these mail-in ballots. Yeah, that they will. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get to some medical questions. Kathleen asked, is it safe to take regular aspirin or low-dose 81 milligram aspirin or other products that have aspirin in them if you have or think you have the virus. Well, this debate started when researchers overseas suggested that ibuprofen and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs could aggravate COVID-19 symptoms. Yeah, all the talk was about ibuprofen, but aspirin is also a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, and so it falls in the same category here. The good news is that the FDA, the World Health Organization, and other groups say there is no scientific evidence connecting these over-the-counter medications with worsening symptoms for people who get coronavirus. Uh, these drugs can have side effects, though, so as always, you need to be aware of that, but there's nothing specifically tied to COVID-19 symptoms, at least as of right now, but Mary Alice, I think we always tell people every time we do a question like this, the research continues because sometimes we've talked about stuff that, uh, you know, the experts put out one thing and then they learn more and it changes a little bit. But yeah. that's what we know as of now. But it's concerned a lot of people. I mean, I take one of the low dose aspirin every day. And mm -hmm. so I immediately thought the same thing is, you know, is that going to put me at risk if I end up getting the virus? But uh, apparently no concern right now anyway. Yep, and we'll let you know if that changes, obviously. Mm -hmm. So quite a few people who do not have the coronavirus have reached out to us with this concern. Somebody said, I know I can get into the hospital if it's an emergency, but I'm missing out on doctor's visits because the office is closed and all the focus is on COVID and rightfully so. But what about people who need medical care unrelated to all this? Well, it's true that elective surgeries have been canceled and with social distancing, doctor's offices don't want a bunch of people coming in all the time. Each case is different, but one of the solutions has been an increase in telemedicine, talking to a healthcare provider on the phone or through a computer. 
I know a number of the uh, uh, practices in the in the area um, have started to adopt telemedicine type visits. The federal government has waived a, a number of the HIPAA requirements so that we are now able to communicate more effectively uh, using FaceTime and Skype with our patients. So I would take advantage of that as patients. And, and for those of us who are in the community who don't have primary care physicians, you know, reach out to your healthcare um, insurer and, you know, they might have resources to assist you um, with finding a primary care physician in the community who can, who can help guide you uh, during this somewhat challenging time. Hmm. Yeah, just yesterday, UBMD announced that it was launching new telemedicine services. You need to talk to your individual provider, though, to see if your visit must be in person or if it can be done on the phone or a video call or on a smartphone or a computer or something like that. But it's starting to, I can't really say it's the norm, but more and more people lately, Michael, are taking advantage of this. Yeah, no doubt. And you wonder if after this is all over, that might be one of the lingering impacts is that we see more telemedicine. I mean, people were doing it before this pandemic, but mm -hmm. how will this change how we move forward? Yeah, it may be a good new normal switch up. Alrighty, well, Dr. Fadima, who we just heard from there, said that exercising is one of the most important things that you should be doing right now. Yeah, we know exercising is always important, but especially in this moment, because with COVID-19, one of the best ways to boost up your immune system to fight the virus is to be in shape. The problem is, of course, that that can be difficult right now, especially at home. Right, with gyms closed, your choices are a bit limited, but there are ways to get in some cardio and strength training. Yeah, we solicited your questions on this subject, and one viewer said to us, I try to get to the gym as much as possible, but I haven't worked out at all. I am working at home and my kids are here. It's hard. So not really a question, but yeah, a lot of people are in this same boat. We spoke with Emily Vavra from her home in Los Angeles. She's a fitness and nutrition expert who has been doing Zoom and Skype meetings with her clients. You know, there's there's your classic body weight stuff, right? You've got your jumping jacks, you've got your push-ups. We can do tricep dips on a chair. But what I have found to be fun and different is use towels in the kitchen and you can literally, you know, do a thousand different things with them. You can even do leg presses with them. You can go backwards. You can get on the floor and do push-ups and burpees with it. But try using dish towels, honestly, and you'll see and feel the difference um, for sure. And, you know, I, I just recommend trying new things, Googling new things, YouTubing new things, or I also have a, a really quick program that you can use at home as well. And, and I've even uh, zoomed in friends to work out with me as accountability. So there's an idea for you as well. <laughs> Or it's just a great excuse not to do anything at all. There's <laughs> coronavirus, Michael. Yeah, a lot of us are, are trying to deal with that. I was just trying to pull up. I meant to put this, put this in the thing, um, but you can find Emily easily online. I know she's got a lot of stuff on her YouTube channel and also on Instagram, um, so you can kind of get some cool ideas. Yeah, I'll share out her contact info Yeah, on tons of apps out there, too. I was surprised yeah. that, you know, I don't know if they were always there or people just sped up, you know, putting them together, and that's a big help, too, just to have some new routine to fall into part of the new normal yeah, yeah.